welcome to what are you saying hashtag ways where we talk about topics in the news as it affects us all i am osayo mistali and today diola and i are in studio yeah very sober day for me <laughs> i'm tired i've had a long day how are you Good. how did your weekend go restful okay the week how's it starting off good okay really good Awesome, awesome. All right, we lost time, so let's just move into the conversation, right? Today, we want to discuss this uh, 70 billionaire matter. Happy? It's 70 yeah. billionaire, not yeah. dollars, yeah. 70 billionaire. <laughs> Here's what we found as today's quote Out of sheer insensitivity coupled with impunity, the members of the National Assembly, regardless of politi political affiliations, conspire to bridge the relevant provision of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, by padding the Supplementary Appropriation Bill 2023 to provide the co uh, so-called palliatives of 70 billion naira for, for 306 newly elected members, human rights activists, and senior advocate of um, Nigeria, that's uh, Femi Fanana. I don't know what happened with the video. Yeah, something just, <laughs> I don't know. There was a different was, video that came out. I was out. wondering who is running and what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. So last week, um, Thursday, the House of Representatives approved the 500 billion naira request by the President, uh, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, for the provision of palliatives to mitigate the impact of petroleum subsidy removal on Nigerians. However, the recent decision by the National Assembly to allocate 70 billion naira from the 819 billion naira federal supplementary budget to its members has sparked outrage amongst Nigerians and the lawmakers claim that the funds are intended to improve their working conditions. Um, but many Nigerians view the allocation as insensitive, particularly at a time like this. Now today we are discussing the 70 billion naira budgetary allocation for lawmakers and we have with us Kunle Lawal um, to discuss this but are you are still watching ways the international criminal court observes um this day um that's the in international criminal court uh, international criminal justice yeah on the 17th of july each year this significant date commemorates the adoption of the Rome st um, Statute on 17 July 1998, which established the International Criminal Court. The court primary uh, mission is to safeguard individuals from atrocities like genocide, crimes against humanity, war crimes, and the crime of aggression. I know that a lot of Nigerians have done a lot of appeal, you know, towards, you know, I think right from the build-up of the, um, the October 20, 2020, um, enters protests yeah. and all of that. I know there are loads of cases. I don't know how quick um, the International Criminal Court resolves cases, but I know that Nigerians, a lot of Nigerians have submitted petitions, mm. you know, signed this petition here and there and all of that. I don't know how effective do you think this International Criminal Court mm. is? It's actually effective. I mean, when we look at um, some of the cases that have been tried, but I also think that... Um, there is also a bit of um, sensationalism, more like like um, maybe they only take on cases that are actually so sensational in its atrocities, you know, that it's shocking to the world or their criteria. I've never really looked into, you know, their criteria for even taking on cases like, you know, so... Uh, what you said about NSAS and all that, it might just be that um, it has to go through quite a whole lot of um, investigation, <laughs> you know, before they feel the need to take action. Absolutely. All right, so what did you find first in the news? Okay, um, this one is, um, the headline is, um, NEC uh, may okay tariff hike as electricity subsidy hits 2.8 trillion. Okay, so um, this one, I took this one from Punch, and um, it's uh, on Friday, um, the paper reported that 11 power distribution companies in Nigeria had applied for the review of elect electricity tariffs so as to incorporate the changes in Nigeria's macroeconomic parameters. Um, the report stated that NEC disclosed this in a notice and said that the disclosure stated that their reasons for the rate review 
were premised on factors affecting the quality of service, operations, and sustainability of the companies. Now, remember that um, as at um, June 25, 2023, you know, we had all, all heard, or rather, we, we saw like a notice from some of these discos that there was going to be a 40%, you know, hike, but um, which was going to take effect from July the 1st. But, you know, the discos, however, they backtracked the next day after widespread criticism, as they stated that the Nigerian Electric Regulatory Commission had yet to approve the hike. Of course, this development caused a lot of apprehension, considering all the hardship that people are going through. And, you know, so a lot of prepaid consumers, I know, because, I mean, I, I knew friends who rushed to top up. Oh, yeah, I mean, they rushed to buy more electrical electricity oh, yeah, units yeah. in their meters, you know, thinking that, um, you know, the hike was going to take effect and all that. I mean, so this is all, um, it's bad timing. Yes, they keep coming up with all these um, excuses and all that. So one neck, what I find interesting is, um, um, is um, now this, um, this is um, a senior official at Next stated that the commission will ask the power firms to further state why they were bent on having a hike in tariff during the proposed meeting. If you study, I mean, you know, you want to check for the performance uh, improvement plan, the number of transformers they're going to buy, did they buy it, and what's the, what is the justification for this increase they are asking for? How many transformers, lines, meters, ETC? Are they bringing on? How many customers are going to migrate from four hours to eight hours, from eight hours a day to 10 hours? I mean, they want all this routine and they want the justification before they can approve this electricity hike. And um, I mean, if they're really looking into things like this and they're really asking them these questions and not just for, you know, for the sake of publicity, I think this is a step in the right direction. You know, you can't just increase electricity tariff without doing the needful so yes i mean if i'm going to pay more then you have to there has to be some form of guarantee that says that okay yes your quality of service is actually going to improve you know and i think this is good on the part of the regulatory body to ensure that i mean before any hike happens they must satisfy the necessary requirements <laughs> hopefully <laughs> So if you are among those people that mm. you take a drink in a pet bottle or mm. a sachet but water or pet water, whatever, or nylon, pe um, plastics, all those mm. ones, and after eating whatever it is that you have, you dump it on the, on road, the road, you are part of the problem of Nigeria, you know. Um, I saw this very heartbreaking story this evening and, you know, it, it just broke my heart because, again, this is something that we see all over and over again and i don't know if they can just play the video while i'm talking if you see that video this is around the agege access of oh, um, nigeria right or really agege local council development area that these students were stranded they couldn't go home you know after floods took over the other areas of um, the oko oba community or really agege students were seen in different uniforms right according to the residents James Joel had not been able to return to their various homes as the flood leveled up the bridge in that area. Um, they have been stranded for about two hours when this report was done. They said the students of the Lagos Baptist Senior Secondary School, a co junior secondary school, and Lagos Baptist Senior College, um, all those children in that, um, those schools were not able to get to their houses. And of course, um, they say that these floods always happen. They always experience floods, and um, I mean this kind of uh, flooding whenever there's Even. a heavy downpour. Um, the Lagos State Speaker of yeah. the House of Assembly, mm. uh, Mudashiro Abasa, right, yeah. Honorable Mudashiro Abasa. Yeah. You are from Agege, Abi. That's your constituency. Mm. Like, if we keep on saying this all the time, and you are there. At least for some, you know, some, let it be that, okay, yes, you know, um, I know, I know that we shouldn't concern ourselves with oh, only just fixing my, 
vicinity. But this particular problem is, is quite main. prevalent around that area. And mm. if you're the speaker of the, the entire state assembly, and you, you know, I mean, you've been there for a while, find the people in that local government constituency what exactly is, is the, the problem. problem. And let's solve this problem. Like, flooding is not rocket science. Like, literally, is not. You can actually, this water can be channeled in the right way. So let's get the expertise. If you say, okay, maybe we don't have enough expertise, again, look for people that are, are knowledgeable to be able to fix that problem because it's so sad. And it's an eyesore. It's an eyesore. Like yeah. literally when I, was, when I was younger and it rains, I used to hate going home mm. because I, I have to pass. This one is not even up to this. I had to pass some kind of streams. You see all those centipede. And so the thing used to irritate me. So because of that, I had a mental, like it, it stuck in my head because from my primary school, I had to cross over to my sister, my, my older sibling's school so that they would pick us because, up from there. Yeah. That small journey, there's a particular corridor, I can't forget that, that narrow path. You will just see all the things crawling and, you know, water and everything. I cannot imagine all of this that these children are going through. You know, it's, it's just sad. sickening. It, it's sad that um, the government is rather, react, you know, reactive. Like, you would expect that they should be proactive. We all know the periods of rains in this country, in Lagos. We have weather forecasts. You know the peaks. Exactly. So you just, know so... the challenges. And this is an urban area. This is supposed to be the most populous local government area in Lagos State. So let's even for the purpose of politics say that this is even where you most politicians, you know, will think to amass their votes from and all. You it, it's just sad <laughs> that this is happening in a in in a city, in an urban city. Very sad. Let me just quickly mention again before we run off, um I had another story I wanted to just bring to our attention. Something around the, um anthrax. Um, oh. breakout in Nigeria <clears throat> says that they have detected um, a, one of the cases in, in the farm in Niger state. Um, so according to this report, right, um, things like consumption of hides, that's Pomo, in case you don't know what hide is in, 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 in um, local dialect, um, these are the things that can easily cause, you know, um, the hides. It says the federal government uh, specifically stated that the disease was widespread in northern Ghana bordering Burkina Faso and Togo, as it is also promised to keep, um, it also promised to keep Nigerians updated on the development of the disease. For those that do not know the anthrax, I, I quickly, because I don't know, mm, it says a disease that is known. caused by a poor, a spore forming bacterium. It um, <clears throat> mainly affects animals. Humans can become infected through contact with an infected animal or by inhaling the spores. Now, the issue I have with this, so why are they linking it with Mokoma? is already treated as heat and everything. So maybe the government will need to come out and clarify how this yeah. is then transferred. Because to me, I think it's like raw contact, not cooked contact. Do you understand? Okay, so there is also the case of you go to the market, you buy. It's mm. not boiled yet. It's not cooked No, but yet. Pomo, if it's Pomo they are talking about, Pomo, before you will meet Pomo, that's why they even they are... People that are fighting against Pomo, it's not so much of this. It's because of the, 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 the what's it called, what they used to cook it. So some people use tires to burn it, to, to be able to, to skin, the, remove the hair, right? So they say it's cancerous to the, mm. to, to, the, to the body. So Pomo already is a cooked meat as it is. You can eat Pomo raw like that, you know, without even putting it in because it's already cooked. So I want to understand the link between the spores and the heights, right? Mm. Because it's not like we get the, the, the skin raw. It is already like battered maybe with so it's many... Maybe resistant to heat. heat. It's possible. Yeah. All right, so on that note, we want to bring in our guest and let's discuss this allocation. Stay with us. We'll be right back.